Call the meeting to order. Clocking? Here. Kelly? Here. McKinley? Yes. Testory? Yes. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to have public comments tonight. Uh, Elizabeth Folks, would you like to take the floor? Thanks, Scott. Um, um, I'm here for Heritage Days, and since we're in camera and there's so many people, 2018 event is 24th, 25th, and 26th of May, Memorial Day weekend. I hope to see you guys. Mark your calendars. Um, we sent a proposal to the council earlier this week. Um, and as it states, the city has been a key partner in their continued support is crucial to the future success of Heritage Days. Uh, we are again this year asking for $10,000. However, we realize there are many factors that go into the council's decision. And we want to let you know that we're open and flexible for some negotiation. And if you have any ideas after reading our proposal or paperwork, we're happy to discuss them with you. Um, I did want to ask um, that you would consider the possibility of bringing this up for discussion later in the meeting as a non-agenda item during other items. We had hoped that we might have a decision this evening or at the very latest next meeting. With the refusal to place this on the agenda, we, have now, we now have concerns that our commitment from the council will be more delayed. We had hoped to sign a national recording artist before the holidays are upon us. This is crucial. Many of the artists are now signing contracts and filling up their calendars. So the longer we wait, the shorter our list is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ryan Cobb, do you want to take the floor? Thank you, Scott. Um, uh, we had talked uh, there at the turkey shoot yesterday. I wanted to see if I could bring an idea I had to light to to the council um, about this trash mandate. Um, I know some people are for it, some people are against it, but I have an idea that might keep both sides kind of at bay um, of possibly doing, instead of a trash mandate, possibly creating a program to help those who cannot afford trash because that is the main concern with the trash mandate is people that have problems with getting rid of their trash, you know, keeping the community clean. And, and I completely understand it. Um, I had <coughs> spoke with Scott about it, uh, possibly doing, even if it was just $1 to all of the re residential properties in the town, $1 a month, $12 a year, and having that fund a program that could in my, my discussion with him, the m amount of properties could easily pay for any of these people in town that cannot afford it themselves. And it would keep anyone from being mandated, and it would also keep Knights from losing any business, and possibly people <coughs> from this community from losing their jobs. I just hope that you guys take this into consideration and think about that, the possibility of, of making our own program instead of going with mandated anything. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Gary Ressler. Uh, yeah, just my uh, belief on the trash proposals are I can't believe you're considering dumping a guy that's been here, that's a local guy, and local people that work and live in this town that work for this guy, Kaufman. He's been around forever. Now, I don't know area disposal that has anybody in town that lives here and works for them, they're huge. So them not getting a contract is not going to hurt them at all. Yeah. And this town and city has always promoted, let's take our business to our people in town. Yeah. You know, the hardware store, Coniglio, he's new. Everybody we go, I try to get everybody in town that I can before I go out. 
Uh, just like I wish a lot of people would take my Frontier telephone service. I know a lot of you aren't proud of it, but that's where I work and that's my bread and butter. You know, we can't please everybody. We try hard. We really do. And I'd hate to see Blue Ridge go down or get rid of some people. Uh, I kind of think, personally, this is, uh, you're, you're just bullying us and taking it, well, this is what we're going to do. I don't know why you didn't put it on a ballot. Uh, at some point in time, well, you got to do it right now. Just keep an open mind. This is of the people, for the people, and by the people. So let's take that in consideration. Thank you. Very cheap. Yeah, I was going to talk about coming totally unrelated uh, from the uh, garbage mandate. Well, I was thinking this week that since you're thinking about mandating garbage, uh, I had a great proposal, save you money, save us money, it's an amazing idea. Let's shut down the Pharma City Power Plant and have Ameren come into town. Rates will be cheaper for the citizens, overhead of the power plant will gone, and I think that's a super duper idea on both sides. And I've thought that for a long time. Never have come to a council meeting and ever expressed that. But I think that's an excellent idea. It'll save the citizens a ton of money. Ton. And Ameren rates are so much cheaper than Farm City. And the overhead with the employees uptake or keep upkeep, pardon me, of the power plants and everything. I think it would be much cheaper for the city all the way around. Uh, also, I support Heritage Day. I think Heritage Day is one of the best things that ever happened to Farm City. When it went away the last time, it was a, a sad, sad thing. And I was glad that it was, you know, that it came back. Because it helped the city so much, like the races and everything else that goes on in this town. And I definitely support Harry Day. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Bray. Michael, Michael Bray. they called you. <laughs> You're up, brother. You're up, brother. my name. I can't hear back here. <clears throat> you know, they got to speak up. I'm hard of hearing, and I'm in the back of the room. Well, yeah, I want to make some comments about this mandated garbage. <clears throat> you know, this is supposed to be, I thought this was freedom of choice. This is the United States, right? Yep. Is it not? Don't you have free choice of who you want to do business with and who you want to supply services for you? This mandate, that sounds like a move by the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. That's the way it sounds. That is a socialist move. Think about it as a council member. You're trying to mandate something that doesn't necessarily have to be mandated. Why should I have to take area disposal over a company that I've been doing business with for years? Just because you're probably getting some kickback somewhere. Now, I've got 40, over 40 years of experience in state government. <clears throat> you know, I've been sitting back. I'm old. I'm decrepit. I, come up, I don't come up to these meetings regularly. But you're trying to ram something down the business <clears throat> town's throat that they, most of them don't even want. And most of them don't even need. You know, if you want to say something about recycling, Fine. Individuals who want to recycle, give them an opportunity to recycle. But don't ram it down everybody's throat. Those who don't want to recycle, why force them into it? Why force them to take a certain company to take their garbage? Right. That is not freedom of choice. So, you know, as far as this, this garbage stuff, I think you ought to just table it forever. Throw it out. <laughs> Leave it the way it is. Those who want to have area disposal can have area disposal. Those who want to have night disposal can have night disposal. There are other companies can come in here 
and offer their services. It's an open, free market. All you got to do, and also, area, if I remember right, you have to use their containers. You cannot supply your own. You have to get your container from them. And all you ever discuss is what they say they'll do the garbage pickup for. Not what all the other little trims and side things that they charge for. Like their area disposal garbage cans. Their limitations on how many garbage cans for a certain cost. All right, Mike, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. David Wilson. Uh, I would like to, <clears throat> to make a few comments in support of the garbage uh, contract. Uh, first of all, uh, every dollar that my uh, family sp does is spend on garbage collection is another dollar that I spend on another business here in town. Uh, this would also reduce the number of garbage collection days. Um, I've got colleagues who have live in communities where they have three different days <coughs> the week when there's garbage sitting out on the street because somebody's picking up their garbage from a different company. Also, since everybody in town will be on the same service, um, everybody will be looking out for everybody else. And I think that that's a good thing. Uh, this contract will incentivize people to burn less. And there are many of our residents who suffer from respiratory conditions. Uh, in addition, we will gain recycling services as well as yard, collect uh, yard waste collection, which is something that we don't have now. And I pay them out, and um, we, don't, we pay twice as much as what we would under this contract um, and we would get more services, so um, it's a win-win. Uh, as far as uh, uh, arguments that, um, that this is not a free market solution, I would disagree. Um, I think this is a free market solution. Uh, bids have been put out. Uh, the winner of that bid is the company we're going with. Uh, the fact that uh, you guys are simply acting as the intermediaries between that doesn't change the fact that this is a free market solution. So I, I hope that the uh, council will consider voting in favor of this. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alice Gunn. Okay, you've heard from me the last couple of meetings, so I'm just going to reiterate. Okay, number one, I don't think. City. I like Testorial's comment last time. I don't think our council has anything to do with garbage. Okay? I just don't. I don't think they have any business in it. I do. I have no problem with the recycling. I don't have enough to recycle. I like the idea of the companies offering it. And if my neighbor wants it, my hat's off to them. If they got enough to do it, let them do it. I don't. I think I like having a choice, and I think a lot of people like having choices. Uh, I think when this all started, how many months ago or years ago, that it wasn't laid out very good. It wasn't looked at. I'm sorry. I don't think you guys did enough research. I don't think you talked to the communities around here. And how much is actually going to landfills? The cost to put it on a ballot has been brought up that wasn't researched. Uh, like I said, I used to, when we had a project where I worked at, we laid out plans and options. I think if our garbage companies offer recycling, they bill us, you're out of it. I don't understand why there's always a fee, a franchise fee, a fee for this. The city needs their nose out of garbage. We have more important things. End of my comment. You guys have listened to me the last three times. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. Sandy Maxwell. <coughs> uh, my first question is, what happened to the garbage companies each offering recycling on their own? Which Willard mentioned, uh, I believe, was the October 2nd meeting. It hasn't been decided on. I'm sorry? It was never decided on. Dave, are you going to offer recycling? Um, well, since you asked my name, <laughs> or mentioned my name, I came in this evening to represent both myself, my company, and my employees. Uh, just for things to consider. 
<coughs> never paid much attention to social media because I really haven't had to. I like to hear about it from other people. But I did in a couple of posts explain. So I'm in a defensive position here because you are able now to use municipal action to basically acquire my business here in this town, which is not necessarily, well, it's not necessary. You don't have to do it because our, my company in particular has stated that we would offer our recycling services, curbside recycling program, to our customers. Now, there's been debate and bannered back and forth on social media that that's going to raise the cost. I've heard of, well, Aaron, I think, said 3 to $4 a month. I don't know where that number came from. I didn't say anything. I haven't said anything on any of those about well, how much it's going to cost. I misquoted you, and I apologize for that. <laughs> However, it was mentioned several times in social media that it came from you folks, <laughs> that the cost would go up. Now, one, under the franchise agreement, there is new revenue to the city in the amount of, assume I write, roughly twelve to $13,000 projected. Yeah. New revenue under the licensing proposal licensing ordinance that you've discussed, I think, Sue, I think you mentioned around 7000 So it's still new revenue to the city if you go with a licensing proposal. The rates that have been bid by, I think Eric's around the corner there at very disposal, naturally is going to be lower than what my company can bid. It was. The differences are a couple of things. One, I have to utilize a landfill. We do not own an endpoint disposal facility. We actually have a contract with area disposal of the company landfill to deliver everything that we collect there. That's how I was able to negotiate the best rate for my company for disposal. So I'm obligated to them to deliver things to them. When they price or bid a situation like this, they can figure wholesale landfill rates because they own the landfill and their disposal service company who runs adjacent with it. Naturally, they can do bookkeeping however they want to make that rate come down. In addition to that, to make that rate come down that they're able to bid and advance disposal, if you remember them, uh, they, were a little, they were in between the two of us, their rates can be lower also because they also own their own disposal facilities. Uh, the other part of it is when you franchise and you put on your utility bills, whatever that negotiated rate is, I've stated it before and you folks really don't know, only Eric and I do, that there were about 348 people unaccounted for that are going to get garbage bills on their utility bills that are not currently paying it. What that does to the $15 roughly that the bill does is the people that are using a service, you can add back $6 to that $15 rate, and that's what the franchisee is going to be receiving for the services they're providing. Hey, Dave. Yes. I feel obligated to catch you up because I got into her time by asking you a question. That's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we're we're, we're, we're we over the three minutes. Uh, no, I'm willing to respond to questions, so I'll just sit here and be good then. Well, you said you're going to offer recycling. That was yes. That was the, that was my question. Yes, and I do not anticipate a rate increase for that at all. He indicated that at the end of the October second meeting. Yes. Yeah. All right. And I know area disposal is capable of doing that also. They so does I. I know one thing that has been brought up is that uh, an old trash ordinance. Um, needed to be enforced. It was passed in 1968. No one on the council has seen fit to enforce this in almost 29 years. So why do you feel it's necessary to enforce it now? Um, that's an ordinance that's been in place. I mean, I can't <coughs> help the fact that it's not been enforced, but we're going to start enforcing some of these ordinances. <coughs> Thank you. Joetta Gamage. Okay. 
people choose to live in a small town because they aren't mandated by a city government or by certain people on the council that think they control the city government. Um, we have never been informed what is the final cost to the residents if this mandate is, I mean, nobody has been informed, it's not been sent to anybody. Most of the residents, not most, but a lot of the residents are not aware that this is even going on. I mean, I've got neighbors and so on, elderly people, they don't know that this is going into effect. I've got a person in front of me. She didn't even know it until a couple days ago. I mean, it's not been made aware to everybody. And like I said on my Facebook post, you know, it's okay on your city newsletter letter to say that we're going to play card bank games or we're going to have crafts by whoever, but you're not saying anything important enough to the, all the city residents of what is going to affect their monthly income. And it's not been put on the ballot. I've posted that. Aaron said it was going to cost thousands of dollars. Yes, it will if it was put on the ballot. But, but nobody contacted the county to put it on the ballot. If it was put on the ballot next spring, it's going to cost $100 to $150. And like I told you, I will pay the cost to put it on the ballot myself. And you said, no, you weren't interested to do that. Um, the Wilkins <coughs> made a post about recycling. Um, is the school, the whole school district, are they going to recycle everything? I mean, that is a huge task for all the teachers, all the staff, to recycle everything since they are so in favor of this. I mean, that is a huge task. And I called seven communities. Five of seven do not have the mandated garbage. And one of the communities does not pick up big items, refrigerators, etc., which is supported by um, area disposal. And I also sent a FOIA request, Freedom of, Freedom of Information Act, today, requesting all information to be provided to me about all this garbage mandate information. So, I mean, it's a big deal. All right, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. <laughs> and our last one is Kathy Brown. Um, I just wanted to say also I feel that we should, nothing should change except for the curbside recycling. Everything has been fine. Nobody's ever had a problem that I'm aware of. Um, but there are pros and cons to it. I think recycling is a wonderful thing. Um, but I also feel that there is a lot of underhanded or secretive um, things that we're not made aware of up front. Um, I know that one of the garbage people called on the 16th to see if there was going to be discussion. Um, and they were told by the um, city manager that there was no need to show up, there wasn't going to be any discussion, there was going to be no voting. And I don't think that's right. Um, so I think if everybody was more on board, up, up above the board and honest and upfront, people would be more receptive. Um, but I just think that we should have a choice. And I mean, what is, I, other people have asked, what is the total for each company that it's going to cost us? 
is fourteen seventy five a month uh, for the first year from area. It would be twenty three fourteen a month from Night Environmental, and then advanced disposal would be uh, twenty dollars a month. And as Dave said, he has to pay Night or area to dispose of the recycling where area has their own recycling. So I don't know if they build themselves, if it's two separate entities with their recycling business and their garbage business. Do any of you know that? I don't know that it's relevant. It's their good fortune that they have the, the It's the, the facility. fortunate that they have that ability to do that. Where Dave doesn't, he's paying them. Right. to do that and he has to pass that cost on to us so if I mean it's the same but different um, but anyway I appreciate you listening and I hope that you guys can be more um, open to the fact that people want to make their own choice and if both companies are re allowing or providing recycling then that should be the end of it. That's, there's nothing more to discuss, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. Thank you for your public comments. Uh, we're gonna... One question? No, ma'am. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought this was America's yeah, The question is, uh, is that for one tote or two totes or what? So, that would include one tote. You would get one ninety-six gallon tote for recycling and one ninety-six gallon tote for trash. And that's from area, correct? That's from all services. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the consent agenda. Second. Test story. Yes. Copy. Yes. Kelly. Yes. McKinley. Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to section two, unfinished business. Move to bring from the table orders 991. I'll second it. Kelly? Yes. Now this is to bring from the table. Right? Yes. Okay. McKinley? Yes. Testory? Yes. Coffee? Yes. Motion carried. Back on the floor yes. to be discussed. Yes. Do we have any discussion? The uh, it, it, it's apparent that the recycling issue is one. The uh, Dave will provide it, and I assume Area will follow suit to keep the, keep their customers. Um, I would recommend that we drop this this mandate and look at at rewriting our ordinances to require each customer, each resident of Farmer City, to have the garbage service. Right now, it only requires them to have a have a a container and a way to get rid of it. But in talking with other people, there's a lot of trash being dumped into uh, dumpsters, which is theft of service is what it comes down to. And we can fix that if we if we were, if every citizen is required to have garbage service, that also fixes the economy of scales. That add, that adds the what 15 or 20 percent that don't have service into the into the mix and it should help with the cost of service there's no doubt that hiring that contracting this out will save money the question is do you want an intermediary to make the decision for you or do you want to do it yourself I also talked to the county today and there is no charge to put this on the ballot in March so that's what I have right this minute It would cost us money, though, correct, to to publicize to put it on the ballot. So, like at least what a thousand haven't dollars? You have it so far. <coughs> Anybody? Any further discussion? There, yeah, there, there's also more meaningful ways to save residents money. We've talked about the power about the power utility rate. Uh, that would be huge. We could also we could also look at at offering disc offering uh, what what uh, what's this fellow's name 
I'm sorry, I couldn't remember your name. Ryan Cobb. Coming up with some way to help those that, that qualify as low income. Uh, it's just that we, we just we haven't thought about it enough. We need to put more work into this. Uh, what we're doing, what the, what the mandate does is use the city's buying power to drive the price down. And that is not, I don't think, I don't, in my personal belief, that's not what the city's here for. We're not here to drive the price down on stuff that we don't need to be into. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I, one of the problems I have is enforcing, you know, we're going to start enforcing these. The minimum fines on this stuff is $100. And uh, can go as high as $500 if I'm correct. Uh, I hate to see somebody not have trash service and get a $100 fine when the low cost bidder is $177 a year. It really doesn't make any sense. I just think there's been a motion. Oh. I thought that was the motion on the table. The no, it's just a bring it from the table. Not even a motion. Okay. Yeah, to bring it back from the table uh, for discussion. So, no, there has not been a motion to make sure. I move that for um, Ordinance 991, Ordinance Authorizing Seat Damage Under Agreement with the Area Disposal for Residential Refusal and Recycling. Refusal and Recycling. Second. Call it. Coffee? Yes. Kelly? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Testory? No. Motion carries. We couldn't hear it. Are you serious? Folks, it's on the it's on the paper that you picked up when you came in. You're serious. You just couldn't hear what I'm saying. Well, they just voted for the mandate. Ridiculous. They carried it. We're gonna move on to section three. Who does this? This one is based on their previous actions. You can Unless there's anything I want to amend, I'm going to draft it with the letter. If there's anything you want to proceed with that, you can serve. Scott, so they bought you off, right? Yeah, they bought you off. Yeah. No. no, but they did. Yeah. They did. Okay. And this is the people. And we hire some people. And those are the people. So what happened was I was trying to draw something up and send it to you. Send it to you. Do you have a card by chance? I did. So we're going to remove. But I think I'm going to remove it from the agenda for now because we need to evaluate what was in there versus the RFP to make sure that you know, there's anything that's going to happen. When this, when this settles down, can we explain what Willard just said so that the camera can hear it? In, in the motion, Willard, I'm sure the camera can't hear you when we said we were passing Ordinance 991 to go with the area disposal. And we all voted, voted on that. Okay. I mean, I listen to the videos, I have trouble hearing you on the video. So I, mean, I, I don't, I, nobody out here heard you, that's why I was out here trying to vote so there was, there was a there was a motion to pass ordinance 991 which approved the contract for area does the ordinance authorizing the city to enter agreement with area disposal for residential refuse and recycling and you'll have to go back to the video and look and look at how the vote came out that was that's what just happened really I think the vote came out three to one it is yes, Scott. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know that. However, uh, I voted yes. Aaron voted yes, and Scott Kelton voted yes, and Mr. Testori voted no. There's no, there, there's no discussion. This is not a discussion. I just clarification, please. Yeah, you should be clarified for though. Yeah. Okay. So, if you move that, that to uh, okay, let's, let's remove Ordinance 987, the amended garbage ordinance. So we need. You're making a motion, motion to to remove Ordinance 987. I'll second it. I'll make a motion to remove one, or did you just I just did. Okay, second. Call it. Uh, but I heard Phoebe say I second it, so I don't know who okay. did it. Okay, got it. <clears throat> Kelly? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Testory? Yes. Coffee? Yes. Motion carried. All right, section three, new business. Ordinance resolution, uh, and resolutions for initial consideration. 
Um, I know that um, we have previously discussed, you know, introducing uh, legislation and then laying it over. But based on the uh, House bill uh, for tax reform, uh, they're proposing uh, eliminating municipalities' ability to refund bonds, you know, save money that would be effective January 1st. So we'd just like to get this done uh, before anything happens with that House bill. So uh, John is here to answer, to address this and or answer any questions. Um, but I would ask that we, if, if you're in favor, to take a vote on this tonight. I don't know if I explained that well enough. Nope, that was very good. And again, as Sue stated, effective January 1st in the current draft of the House bill, the tax cuts bill. Um, it would prohibit you know municipalities from being able to advance refund bond issues. What you're planning on doing, um, which again in effect is going to save you forty to sixty thousand dollars in interest. It's kind of mind-boggling that they would consider such a move, but they are uh, provide a variety of reasons. But um, again, it's what we're dealing with, and with your approval to kind of waive the first reading and, and um, pass the resolution as is, as written by. Uh, Bond Council Evans, Prolick, Beth, and Chamley. It will then just further along the process and help us get this closed by January 1st. So this will get everything done before they try to pass this bill, correct? It, it should, yes. Yeah, I'm very confident we can get it finished by January 1st. So we need a motion to approve this? Yes, sir. I make a motion to approve Ordinance 990. Second. And I hate to do this, Scott, but could you read the whole thing? Yeah, let's <laughs> this is a this is million dollars and my name is on this, so. I would please ask you to read the whole thing. <laughs> All right, make a motion for the adoption of Ordinance 990, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a general obligation refund bonds, alternate revenue source, series 2017 of the City of Farmer City, DeWitt County, Illinois, providing that the details of such bonds and for an <coughs> alternate revenue source and the levy of a direct annual taxes sufficient to pay the principal of and interest on such bonds and related matters. I'll second. I'll second it. So am I reading a tax increase in this or? No, uh, oh. we, we have paid them. All right. This is an alt rev source. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Call it. McKinley? Yes. Testory? Yes. Coffee? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. We'll and uh, John and I have a uh, conference call with the Standard & Poor's just to review our credit rating, so hopefully nothing should change. I think we're still in good shape. Yeah. So. Yep. November 20th, and we'll get this completed for you by January 1st. All right. Thank All right, sir. Thank yep, you. thank you. Thank you. Yep. Make a motion for resolution 2017-44, amending resolution 2001-16, drug and alcohol abuse policy. I'll second it. Uh, it came to my attention that we were um, uh, randomly testing um, non-CDL drivers, you know, office workers, to the tune of three to five to a thousand dollars a year in unnecessary random testing. This would eliminate that. It still keeps on the books all your CDL, all your drivers. It also still keeps on the books if somebody shows up. It appears to be an you know probable cause. So it's not eliminating any of our tools that if they get in an accident with a city vehicle, you know, they show up and there's reasonable suspicion, those things are still there. It's just the random testing for no reason. And it should save us anywhere from three to seven hundred dollars a year. I move to adopt a resolution 2017-44, amending resolution 2001-16. Uh, oh, go ahead. I mean, we already had a motion a second. Yeah. Oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. Scott, call it. <clears throat> Test story. Yes. Coffee. Yes. Kelly. Yes. McKinley. Yes. Motion carried. Make a motion to approve to waive the bidding process and hire G. A. Rich and Sons. For the depot road lift station in the amount of three thirty-one thousand three hundred dollars. Discussion. Any second. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. I can second. I will second. 
Um, I know this was before you before. Um, Alderman Sestori had a question about, you know, why not go out to bid. In regards to the depot road lift station, this would fall under the statute for uh, an emergency. Uh, it was just reviewed again, and it's running on one pump. And not only is the pump uh, eroded, but the um, a lot of the mechanisms around it. He got two quotes, which would probably be the same bids that we would go out if we put, but it would be probably three to four hundred dollars to advertise for a bid. And you know, we've delayed this, and it really needs to get fixed. So we're going to start dumping the sewage. This all is the, over the place. one we're running this on the one, backup now, correct? Yes, and we have uh, rebuilt it three times to the tune of about ten grand each. So now we're getting a new one for 31. We've already put in almost 30. Does it service the, the rest area? Yes, and the state won't help us. We've asked. This isn't the single provider one, though. No, this the, that's the next one. Do we have a contract with them that they? The state? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I don't know, Sandy or Joe. Do you? <laughs> the reason for the pump one is it just it's old. Or is it because I know there's been a problem? It's been rebuilt heads. several times. Because of the rags that go into the... That it's wasn't that... Head, right. you know, yeah, that has been an issue. Through. And I think that was part of what they were going to try to address with this new equipment. If it goes out, who does it affect? The rest area. The, and, well, and the rest area in... Heartland, yeah. where he works at. Uh, Next Maxwell 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 all those places. That's where they go electric. It doesn't affect anything through the town, but it affects that out there north of the railroad tracks. You know, these are the kinds of things that you're going to be looking at if we don't start taking care of our infrastructure. Right. And this has been put off for a while. We've been... <coughs> what is the state in. saying as to, like, that they have no They've got their own station, or? and that's their responsibility, and that this is ours. So uh, that station this? operates... Two lift stations operate that... It comes from the rest station. It lifts to theirs and lifts to the rest theirs and then it comes to ours. So what do we get to run their sewer through Farmer City? I don't think we get anything. I don't, I don't even see any revenue from the state for that. Why are can we not getting that? that? Can we change that? We can ask. I, I doubt it. I've never seen anything. I mean, if this goes down, they're backed up as well as we are. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Right. But it's not their lift station, it's ours. Right, but it directly impacts their, their rest area. You're making complete and total sense, but the state's not interested. That's the state of all of It makes sense to you? Yeah, yeah, we don't make a lot of sense all the time. <laughs> uh, I 100% agree with you. Yeah. We've tried that. I'd like to see it bid out. But. Okay. I, I'm just telling you, it'll be several hundred dollars and you'll probably get the same to, you know, quotes. I think it's, in the quote seems... There's two, it was kind of interesting how far it different it was. It is weird how they're far apart they are. Are these the same type of pump? Or what's what's the deal here? Because the, the amounts are way, way, way out. No, well, they're way apart. off. Well, they're attached. I didn't, I didn't study them to be honest. What was, what's the minimum we got to bid out? 21,000? 25, it just went up this year as far as what they're getting. Yeah. 25, it went up. But, I mean, you can waive that. Yes, you, you can waive it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This next one's a single provider. It's the same style pump. Why is it a single provider if it's the same style pump? No. This is a single, This is also a panel. The second one, the next one. Oh. And Scott, just, to, just so we're clear, uh, y yes, um, state law does require bidding. But this council can waive that bidding requirement uh, if you provide some rationale, uh, whether that's emergency, whether that's single source bidding, uh, some rationale. How long does it take to bid it out? Anyway, you, know, you can do up to five to ten days. It's not so much the timing as the cost. Because especially on this first one, you know, you already got two bids. Those are the only two that you could get. So it's already bid out then? Not bids, I'm sorry, quotes. Not bid out any strict. Not bids. So, I mean, we've already, we've already, we already got two quotes, and it shouldn't be that big a problem just to put, two, put it together in bid form, would it? No, but I'm talking, you know, okay, if you want to spend the three, four hundred dollars. Because the minimum mat is going to be, what was the last one we just said, $180? Mm -hmm. And that was smaller than this would be. And you've already got two quotes. 
I know that, see, that here's, here's my thing. This has been going on for a long time. We're down to the, it's an emergency. We've got to spend it now. And that's the mantra of a lot of people that come through here. And that's the mantra that, that, that uh, has gone on since I've been on the councils. Everything's always a crisis and emergency. I know. It is. You know, when you keep finding that. Because things are so let go around here, Scott. It's going to always keep happening like that around here until it gets straightened around, until it becomes a maintenance program that gets set up. We're going to try to start doing that this next year. There's been no maintenance program two years to keep this up. My, my, my point would be that if we've known this has been going on for a long time, then we should have been it out earlier than this. Well, I don't know if we've been known it's been going on for a long time. There's we been just, things that's happened, yes. We've just been fixing it. It's been band-aided. Everything's been band-aided. Band-aided comes back to one employee that band-aided everything. He saw that. He never brought it to the council, never alarmed anybody. So we got to do that. Well, he just, just band-aided and went on down the road. That's where we're at with this. That's why this crap's coming up like this now. I guess between the last time it was brought here in the spring to now, we had another issue with it. So we, yeah, I'm just trying to get this stuff fixed so that then starting January 1st, we can start being proactive. Well, just like you said, we spent $30,000 in band-aiding it, and well, we're going to spend thirty one for a brand new one. Third time in two or three years, okay. correct? That it's been repaired, and we've got thirty thousand dollars in the repairs. Well, if it, it, yeah, if it takes five days to get a bid, and we're talking years in between repairs, the point of it is this is this has gone on long enough that they got quotes prior to this. They could have just got bids. It wasn't. It was working. It's not working now. No, we're on the backup pump. All right. All right. I guess let me ask you this: What are you trying to gain by bidding versus getting the quotes? Okay. But if we got too close and we're probably going to get something similar, why not save the three four hundred dollars? Well, yeah, man, it's a good point. Yes, in the future, I'd like to see things bid out before it comes down to a, to a crisis. I agree. All right, as long as we agree. I agree. I I want that too. As long as we agree. Thank you. Okay. No, I, I completely agree with you. All right. I just don't. I just want to, want to get some of these emergencies fixed so that the moving forward we can get out the of it. And I'm all about bidding, trust me. I've been riding my Let's just back up a little bit. Price. Were you here when the, when the Denver Cemetery, that one went under, it went down? So that thing wasn't kept up at all. Just like that wasn't kept up by the former employee and everything. The uh, motors weren't working, panels weren't working and everything. It just all band-aided up a little bit. Just to keep it going, just to keep everybody happy so nothing happens. But something didn't make it <coughs> down and it started to, so we had to get it taken care of real quick. Just like the water treatment plant, same thing out there. That was, it's, it's just as good as the operator taking care of it. It's just as the guy putting the salt in the salt tank. If he can't do it, it's not going to work. That's just the same thing out there. They had trouble with that, they had to fix that thing up. And that's just all because of an operator. We've got an operator now who's pretty conscious about a lot of things. We've got Sue who's also very conscious about a lot of things. So if we can get on a maintenance program, yeah, things will get taken care of. You have good people that come back and say, hey, we need to do this now. It's just like the sewage treatment plant down there. That was band-aided for a long time. That pump and we could have band-aided that again. You, you, don't, you don't need the council's approval to bid stuff out, though, right? Yeah. Well, if it's over twenty-five thousand. You need our approval to bid it out. Yeah. So then we have because to wait until the next meeting for that one. That that's why I'm asking you to wait a bit. Wait, bidding it. All right. Mm -hmm. But I, mean, I don't want to keep throwing the same guy under the bus because we know what's happened in the past. Yeah. But I'm trying to trying to follow the procedure because you've got a lot of critics now that are looking at what we're doing. Oh, I realize that. There's always a lot of critics here, Scott. And if we, <laughs> if you follow the procedure, it's easier to say we follow the procedure. Well, let me give you an example. I mean, this is why Mara Stutz is already doing the prep work over on like Washington and Water. Mm -hmm. It's because I want it to be ready to be bid out first thing in the spring. All right. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be doing moving forward. All right. And I'm all about getting the best price. Mm -hmm. ask, ask the staff. <laughs> all right. Do we need to call it? We need to call it. <coughs> Coffee. Yes. Kelly? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Testory? Yes. Motion carries. This one is the Prairie Ridge Lift Station. This is also the panel, and it's completely fried on one side, and they've been cannibalizing it to keep the other side going. Um, this is more. This is also an emergency, but it's also a sole source. He asked around, and, and nobody else could do all this work except this company. So and this would be paid out of tip. Too. Okay. Um, 
They're the only ones that does the electrical portion. Probably. The, the box, it does I both. Yeah, I couldn't get anybody to vote. All right. So you need a motion to approve to waive the bidding process to hire Ga Gasvada and Associates for the Prairie Ridge lift station in the amount of $65,324. Second. Call it. Kelly? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Testory? Yes. Copy? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, section four will be the other items. City manager's report? Um, I don't have anything for now. Okay. Um, non agenda items or other <coughs> business? Does anybody have anything? Did you want did you want to revisit the Heritage Days issue? I would like to, certainly. All right. Well, you okay. can't you can't take a vote to you know action because it wasn't on the agenda. Sure, we'll have to. Put um, this but on there's the no time. reason that we can't get it on the twentieth and you know, get something right away. Okay. Depending on what you want it to be. What's what's the, what's the minimum dollar match you can take? Um, with what we presented, we were looking at minimum somewhere around six or seven. What are, what are your current financials? What do you have in the bank? Um, uh, I think it's right at ten, if I remember right. And then do you have? I, I loved the budget that you submitted. Mm -hmm. I thought that was great. Do you have something similar for last year? I do not. Um, that I was not treasurer at the time. The information we have is, I'd have to go back and piece it together. I haven't had that time yet. At some point, I might be able to, but with moving well, I'm forward. I'm curious about the other revenue sources and, you know. Well, I mean, we have expectations, but we haven't, right now, our revenue source, you know, this is one of our first stops. We have some fingers out, but, you know, that's all projected. Where it stands, the city changes every year, so. Let me ask you this, would you, like if they were to approve six or seven or whatever the amount is, do you need that all up front or can that be parceled it out? It can, can come in time. As yeah. long as we have it by March 1st. March 1st? Yeah, it's it's a matter of just knowing. Because someone that, you know, if it comes out of hotel, motel, we mm -hmm. don't have, I think, 79 in there or less mm -hmm. right now, so. But we're slated to get, we're, we're on target to get about 14,000 total for the year. You're just looking for a dollar amount for commitments, correct? Yes. Yeah. So we, so we know what we're expecting on our budget. So we can piece together that income for the year. Well, if I could even get a consensus, you could probably put it on the consent agenda. She can walk out of here feeling good about what, what you're going towards. Ideally, we have until November 19th to book because they close till Jan after the first of the yeah. year. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. If you can get a consensus, mm -hmm. yeah. to put it on the consent agenda, that means all four are going to vote for it, and you'll kind of know walking out the door yes. what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Could do that. I think everybody comfortable with that. Yeah, the budget is what I was looking for. It was never my intent to kill heritage days. But the the account the accountability is what I was looking for. No, I think it's a great first stop. I, I thought it would, I was happy to see it. So. Do you need to make a motion? Yeah, I, well, no, you can't make a motion, but, um, you know, are you looking at five or ten or, you know, what do you want to put on that consent? We did 75 last year. Mm -hmm. You said you just have to have it by when, March? March 1st. That, that shouldn't be an issue. I'm fair with that. I am too. You guys. Okay. We'll put it on the consent agenda for official vote, but know that that's probably what you're looking at. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I move to be adjourned. Second. Call it. Sandy, do you know how long it will take to get the four year request? <clears throat> well, I have seven days, seven business days, and we're not open this Friday, so. All right, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Two seconds. I make a motion. Stop second. Just for a second. Sorry, Sandy. That's all right. Nope. Oh. Got ahead of me. McKinley? Yes. Testory? Yes. Poppy? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Motion carries.